The first time I started to consider morality in art was when the producer, Mike DeLuca, visited Biola University to speak on his films. You might know DeLuca from his movies Moneyball, The Social Network, and Fifty Shades of Grey. After being asked a question about his opinion on the Fifty Shades trilogy, DeLuca insisted that morality was somehow disconnected from art, that art was given a so-called free pass when it comes to moral standards. I don't know if this was a comment meant to justify his work on Fifty Shades of Grey, but it is something that needs to be addressed so each person can decide where the illusion of creative freedom ends. Like many things, this debate has been around for thousands of years. Many people recognize Plato for being one of the strongest supporters of something called aesthetic moralism. The Internet Encyclopedia of Philosophy defines aesthetic moralism as the view that the aesthetic value of art should be determined by or reduced to its moral value. Conversely, there's a group of people who believe in something called aesthetic autonomism. Autonomists believe that it's inappropriate to apply moral categories to art, and they should be evaluated by aesthetic standards alone. All of this so far might just sound like a bunch of random words, but what does autonomism really mean? To unpack that, first we're going to have to take a step back and ask the question, what is art? The Oxford Dictionary defines art as the expression or application of human creative skill and imagination. By extension of that definition, it would also follow that since the human mind is subjective, so is art. To ask the question, what is morality, is infinitely more abstract. To define morality, I must add the prerequisite that I believe the source of morality is a higher power, and is inherently objective. The Oxford Dictionary defines morality as principles concerning the distinction between right and wrong. Before I elaborate on my side of the argument, I want to identify the ideologies of aesthetic moralism. The general idea held by Plato, and more recently Noel Carroll of the British Journal of Aesthetics, says that any work which invites us to share a morally defective perspective is itself morally defective. In the same vein as that, many moralists hold it to be true that if a work of art was created out of immoral ideas, then the art itself is also inherently immoral. Both of these views seem quite concrete, but upon deconstruction they start to fall apart. To illustrate my idea, I've created a simple model to demonstrate the parts of each argument. There are three aspects to every idea presented. First, there's the artist. Second, the art itself. And third, the patron who experiences said art. Returning to the first argument that, in a moral reaction, to art makes the art itself immoral, we can see that first off, the chronological flow of the model has been completely destroyed. But, more importantly, we can see that the intention of the artist has been dissociated with the response of the consumer. This disconnect once again proves the subjectivity of art, and since morality has been defined as objective, both ideas must be divorced. For an example, we can look at the 1975 hit Jaws. At first glance, it seems to have no outstanding immoral qualities, and Steven Spielberg is a good enough guy. But one unfortunate outcome of the movie was that it directly caused the killing of sharks to jump by over 50% in certain areas. Killing is immoral, so does that mean Jaws is as well? On the other hand, themes of teamwork and overcoming all obstacles are constant throughout the film. These themes are moral lessons and therefore would dictate that the movie be a moral one. You can see how this disconnect makes the argument of Noel Carroll implode. Returning to the second argument of aesthetic moralism, that the creator endows the art with moral or immoral qualities, the model would be assigned like this. To analyze this argument, I want to compare the artist in this context to a writer. To write a book, the writer must first be informed about what he's going to write. This quality can be recognized as the attribute of intelligence. A writer cannot make a book intelligent, he can only fill it with information, which is then interpreted by the reader and, if retained, is once again transformed into intelligence. Just as it is impossible for a writer to make a book intelligent, it is impossible for an artist to make his works immoral. I've come to the conclusion that the only coherently logical solution would be the idea of aesthetic autonomism. Morality is a human quality, and while art holds the properties of human ideas, it is not itself alive. It is a personification of reality to apply humanoid attributes to non-humans. Instead, I propose that it is us who project and interpret morality from art. Just as an exclamation point is not itself loud, yet that's how we perceive it. In true Rogerian style, I want to address some limitations of the thesis that I have set forth. One setback is that my whole argument is predicated upon a theistic worldview. 
the definitions and ideas presented collapse under the idea of a subjective morality. Also, I believe that all art is the representation of human ideas, but not all human ideas are art. If you redefine art to mean all ideas, then I'm certain there are some evil thoughts that can indeed be labeled objectively immoral. It would be impossible to come up with an argument that would persuade the entirety of human existence, so instead I propose we define a middle ground. Art can be very ambiguous, and while personal interpretation is necessary for art to be personally significant, artists should be more clear about their intentions. If an audience knew that art was created out of immoral thoughts, they could think of it as a critique of the human condition. Conversely, if they knew that the art was created to promote good, then they could view it as an example of how to act. Take The Wolf of Wall Street, for example. That movie glorifies the corruption that plagues modern business. As the audience of that film, we should look at it as a criticism of that lifestyle, not as an example of how to model our own lives. This topic has given me more questions than answers, but they are questions that we all must ponder before we dedicate ourselves to creating art. No matter what you ultimately end up believing, we almost personally decide what we are willing to place within our work. Where's the line for Mike DeLuca? Is it drawn at Fifty Shades of Grey? But more importantly, the question you need to answer is, where's the line for you?